I'm Jen from Yarnia, Montclair's local yarn store on Wachung Avenue in Montclair, New Jersey. Today, we have an interview with Meredith Hobbs from Woolfolk. Woolfolk yarns are some of our favorites at the store. They combined the highest quality wool with ethical, sustainable practices using Ultimate Merino, which is a type of merino that's a result of innovative efforts from farmers to produce the very best wool fiber, while also being the land stewards of the Patagonian grasslands. So most wool products have a high percentage of over 30 microns. Uh, that means the diameter of the measure of a strand of fiber. But Ultimate Merino has a micron count of 17.5. It's that much finer. And so it combines the hand of cashmere with the wear of Merino. And one of the things that we love about wool folk yarns is that you can truly feel how soft this Merino is. It really does compare to cashmere. So we carry a number of lines at Yarnia, including Woolfolk Snow, which is their two-ply fingering weight, which it pairs two tones of high or low contrast yarns together in one skein, and it is just buttery soft. This would make an amazing shawl, an amazing sweater, and the marl effect is really just stunning. We also carry Tav DK, which has 12 strands of tightly plied fibers for some incredible stitch definition. And you can see there's the cream. We have several, we have many different colors. We actually carry the full line of colors from Wool Folk. Every color that they have in their color palette is just stunning. And their color palettes work across the lines. So your color one in snow is going to be compared to your color one in Tav, which will compare to your color one in flat. Flat is another one of the yarns. It is also a DK weight, and this is a light and bouncy boucle yarn that is just lovely. It's 100% merino. It's a delight to knit with. Unlike some boucles of the past, you might remember being a little crunchy or a little odd, but flat is something that is just snuggly and cozy and light and airy and lovely. We also carry far their worsted weight, which utilizes a chainette construction that gives a ton of air and body and structure to the fine fibers. It wears beautifully and it knits up gorgeously. And then finally, we also carry Luft, which is bulky, light, chainette tube of Pima cotton filled with Ultimate Merino fleece. It's airy with a slight halo. It You can wear this bulky yarn across almost every season. It's breathable and lovely. It is a pleasure to work with and one of the most beautiful yarns I think we carry. So now, without further ado, we'd like to present our interview with Meredith Hobbs from Wolf. Yes. Welcome to the Chronicles of Yarnia. Uh, <laughs> this is Amanda. I'm Kathleen. And today we are super excited to have with us Meredith of Wolfolk. <laughs> Hi, Meredith. Hi. <laughs> Remotely, obviously, um, thanks to the magic of Zoom, we're able to be chatting today. Yay! Yeah. Yay, magic! <laughs> yes. Hello! Welcome from Portland. <laughs> from portland oregon so yeah. like all the way across the country we're in new jersey mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah yay so um we're gonna talk today about um wool folk how you started a little bit about the fiber a little bit about like what tell us more about it because mm -hmm. um it's always great I've to been, know the backstory yeah i've mm -hmm. been uh i always like to learn more about our fiber companies and it's a mm -hmm. little tricky to learn about wool folk <laughs> sometimes <laughs> So I'm super excited. I was so happy when you said you'd talk to us today. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm really eager to learn more about um your company, the yarns you make, and and more about you. Okay. Yeah, we do tend to keep things kind of mysterious. Most of us prefer to be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined the company five years ago, right before our third collection launched. Mm -hmm. Um, and at that point, Kristen had been Kristen, who is the owner right. and founder had been doing all of the shipping uh, mm -hmm. up till that point. Yeah. And we have a graphics person who does our social media as well. 
And she actually has always worked remotely in San Francisco. Uh-huh. So traditionally in the past, we would fly back and forth. Uh, we haven't been doing that this year. Um, so we are a very small company. We've added um, a designer liaison who coordinates our sample knitting and makes mm-hmm. sure designers have what they need to work with and that their timeline is in line with our production. Um, but otherwise, we're pretty small. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Kristen founded the company uh, not long after her mother passed away. And this would have been around 2013. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was working for a yarn, a local yarn shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, her kids were older and she was... Uh, just working, doing some sample knitting, and they had an in-house brand. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were approached from their representative uh, and shown this exclusive fiber, Ah. the ultimate merino, Yes, yes. Um, and they decided to pass. Uh, Oh, wow. Wow. (laughs) That was, well, you know, (laughs) thankfully, thankfully. I know. We didn't see it from anybody. They said no. Uh, So Kristen went home and talked to her husband and was just like, this is special. It's really Mm -hmm. special. Wow. And he was like, well, you should do it. You should go for it. Mm -hmm. Um, And her sort of joke is if it didn't work out, she would at least have yarn for the rest of her life as far as the (laughs) initial put up, right? (laughs) I'm sure. (laughs) Um, but it did really well and uh, here we are now however many collections in and Mm -hmm. um right so um, which one which yarn was that first one which was the first or or was it more than one line that that she came out with yeah Mm -hmm. far and tend were the first Mm -hmm. okay just 12 colors Mm -hmm. uh, and then everything sort of branched from there Mm -hmm. uh she really wanted to elevate uh, the aesthetic of a uh, hand knit design that was sort of she's a trained architect and really mm-hmm. sort of sees things visually oh, yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh so that's sort of it was a very <laughs> and if you meet Kristen you know a, a lot of our reactions are very gut based like we look at something do we like it we don't we sort of move forward mm-hmm. yeah um, you don't need to mull over it you, you know yeah. mm-hmm. we we both really know one time we were at a photo shop or not a Photoshop, uh, like a photo shoot. And it was the night before we were having dinner. And um, I am trained as a costume designer for theater. Oh, cool. <laughs> Guess what? That was my major in college too. Really? And that's not what my degree is in, but I that was what I did for, that was my direction for a while. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I mean, it's, it's a sort of odd one <laughs> to bring up and then just sort of talk about. Uh, um, uh, Vanessa uh, is also our photographer. She's the one that does our social media and our graphic huh. design. And so really for us, and I, Kathleen, I think this will speak to you, it's about telling the wool folk story, right? And so once you know what that story is, the decisions that you make are, we uh, because we can approach it from a storytelling point of view, once we know our wool folk story, it's easy to determine new colors, Mm -hmm. uh pieces for a collection how Mm -hmm. we want to shoot it because it fits in with what we know is the story does Mm -hmm. that make sense yeah Yeah. absolutely i i would say you know certainly palette wise um you know we love the palette it's it's so you know we're we're 15 miles outside of new york city so we have a really you know very um urban kind of vibe (laughs) i'd say you know suburban (laughs) urban suburban whatever um and you know people come in and we've always sold I mean we've been around three and a half years in, in our three and a half years you know we've sold we sold a lot of gray we sold a lot of black <laughs> sell a lot of yeah. neutrals so you know not only do we love the yarn and were we excited to be able to carry it we knew the palette would do well and to see yeah. people go crazy it's like oh which one of the the tans do I want you know it's like these are our people <laughs> yeah it's it, it is sort of a joke I moved here from New York City 10 years ago, almost 11 now. Uh And so that also very much spoke to me, you know, the sort of neutral palette or darker. Um, And then it's also been fun to see it evolve. If if you look at the first range of colors, it was, Mm -hmm. I think, six, five or six grays, (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is great. And there's a place for all of them, you know, Um, but as it's 
uh, grown sort of introducing the new colors. Like if we were to do a pink, what would that pink look like? Because right. it's not necessarily going to be everyone else's pink. You know, mm -hmm. is it a grayer pink or a browner pink? If if it's mm -hmm. purple, what kind of purple is it? And for sure, yeah. especially the colors that are really hard to describe. Um, you know, mm -hmm. is it red? Is it orange? Is it gold? Is it brown? What is yep. it? Yep. And then you're like, that's a wolf full color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it is funny. When I was um I put together like a scheme for our wall here so we'd know where to hang everything. And you know, when things are getting low, people know to go down to the basement, what they're gonna pull. So, you know, of course I use the numbers, but then I tried. I started trying assigning names to them. And actually after <laughs> I, I graduated with a degree in psychology, I eventually went into marketing and branding. So I did a lot of naming as part of my last corporate job. <laughs> so you think I'd be good at this, right? <laughs> if, you, if you, everyone help with names, I will show you what I've got, but it's hard it, at a certain point. It's like, you know, great number six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is hard. And that was one of the reasons Kristen kind of wanted to keep it as neutral as possible. I get that you have to memorize numbers, um, but- well, no, you know, there are some, this is 16. I know. That's that. right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's nice because it, it doesn't presuppose anything, right? Yes, because exactly. a lot of them change radically when you put them next to other things. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that's a blue can suddenly skew really green if you put it next to another more traditional blue or, mm -hmm. you know, the old greens versus the new greens, suddenly the old greens become really tealy and mm -hmm. it brings a lot of life and depth to the colors. And I think that's what really attracts us to them. So, um, you meant, you you struck something like interesting when you said the wolf folk story so can you tell me like are there words around that what is the wolf folk story what's the mm -hmm. story that you're trying to tell with this mm -hmm. and with yeah. the it's a good question yeah <laughs> mm. um, i vibe with your story love it yeah yeah, yeah. what <laughs> but is that like story? articulating it that way it's like wow i'm connecting with yeah i mean i i think uh i did write i also wrote down some few notes um I mean, I think ultimately we really focus on clean lines, practical knitwear, and mm -hmm. everything is really modern and minimal. And so then yeah. everything kind of fits into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, certainly uh, line wise for collections, but even with the colors. So, yeah. um, you know, sneak peek this fall. Uh, we're looking at orange and like, what does that mean? You know, because like, that's her favorite that's my, color. That's my, is it? <laughs> I'll be our, so curious to hear what you think. I don't, yeah, I don't know if we have any Yarnia things here, but yeah, <laughs> our corporate color, I call it persimmon, but it's a very yellowy orange. It's, yes. Yeah. So, it, you know, it, it just, you know, I just said, what if we consider orange? And Kristen goes, do you wear orange, Meredith? <laughs> well, no not traditionally but mm -hmm. what would be an orange that I would see and be like I want that orange yeah right and, th and that fits with the rest of your color story yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly and yeah. so it was kind of interesting to see a lot of times uh we for inspiration we'll go to a the fabric store that's just down the street uh -huh. and it's called Mill End and it gets a lot of uh designer fabrics um and remnants from New York and all over, but mm -hmm. their selection is really, it's one of those, it's like you walk in and it's super cavernous and it's not very well organized, but mm -hmm. once you like get in there, right? There's yeah. so much good stuff. And we just go around and look at orange and we just grab orange fabrics. Uh-huh, that's a great idea. Because to go then back to the mill, it's it's a better translation from fabric to yarn than say Absolutely. paper to yarn, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. How do you communicate that? So the yarn is, milled in Peru, mm -hmm. but the sheep uh, are raised in Patagonia at the southern tip of South America. Oh, so uh -huh. there it's uh, Patagonia is Chile, Argentina, right? Argentina and Chile. Or Chile. Yes, yes. yes. I think yes. it's both at the bottom there, really, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, see, yeah, you were going to catch me. No. <laughs> All I mean, sorts of note taken. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll put a little picture on the side of like <laughs> half of South America. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very tough geography lesson today. Yeah. Um, it's good when we all learn things. It is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I mean, that, that's, uh, I, I feel like uh, 
yarn central <laughs> in a lot of ways. It is. I mean, some of it has to do, I think, just ecologically. It's, a, you know, this is where sheep thrive, right? And so, mm. and that's not true. I mean, sheep grow all over, but um, it, it is a hub for that reason. Mm. Originally, they were going to mill it in like Italy and Kristen thought we should try to not change contents if we don't have to. I mean, it has to come to us. Right. right? But that was like a whole other extra trip. Yeah. Um, but she uh, she was approached by someone who represents Ovis 21 uh, mm -hmm. to go back to the sheep. Right. So is this a special Ovis sheep? I, I mean, tell me about that. How does yes, that as best I can. And um, if you can link to websites, the Ovis 21 website yeah. does have some information on it. Mm -hmm. um, but they um, are land stewards, mm -hmm. and the goal is to um, have what they call regenerative farming or regenerative wool, regenerative mm -hmm. land management. So they're very careful about the number of sheep, where they're grazing, and then, you know, the whole life cycle Mm -hmm. Comes, but it's about caring for the sheep that care for the land, the land that cares for us and the sheep, right? And and to produce this superior quality product. Mm -hmm. So it's really all managed around, and then they breed specifically to get the fibers that are going to make mm -hmm. that superior quality. Yeah, the micron counts quality. Yeah, tell me about like. Um, how does, so you have a fiber, but obviously that has to go through a process to become a yarn and a skein and all that kind of stuff. So, yes, I haven't been to the mill, so I don't totally know all of those answers. Um, and we have different types, like bar that you're holding is a chain net. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's what rank create is actually chained together. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's very lofty, right? Cause there's a lot of air built there's into the air. actual yeah, chain. Uh, some of ours have, yeah, isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, sometimes I have to be careful of my dry hands. It's so soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Like, I'm actually, just... I'm doing the, um, Coco Knits Knit Along right now. Oh, yeah. with, uh, and I have the far number 20, which is like, um, a dark red up here. Mahogany. Yes. Like a raisin. Oh, it's so yeah. great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm working on that. I, if I had finished it, I would be wearing it, but uh, <laughs> okay. it's a, it's a big, Pronk is a big sweater. A big sweater. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, uh, and so the, the sheep, yeah, the sheep have a very low micron count of 7.5. So the, the 7.5, oh, I'm sorry, not 7. 17.5. 17 okay. Um, <laughs> the sheep have a very low micron count of 17.5. 17.5. <laughs> That's still very low, which is still low, yeah. <laughs> super low, That's but still exceptionally low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the oh scales God. aren't yeah very scaly. They're it's actually very um, sort of sleek. I guess sleek. That's right. <laughs> um, okay, so that's all what makes your, it soft. All of your yarns are made with that. So this yes. as far as chain up, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I I think it is my favorite. I think out of all of them. Oops. Sorry, no problem. <laughs> but I, that's what I was noticing um, because we we have the the far we have the flat here, which is like a yes. loose play. Yep, love the flat. We have the loft, which is like a blown. Yes, core. and that is combined with cotton. The loft is. Yeah, right, right. And then we have the. We have the snow, snow which right. is similar to tend, but they're that's both right. They're ply. both two ply. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can really see the plies in the snow, though. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's, it's just two color. color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the tav and the we have the tav decay, but tav too, right? Is yes, and that has a much higher twist. Multiply is mm -hmm. it a multiply or is it? Yes, it it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah eight, eight I like think twelve strands or something. Twelve. Right? That's it. Something. Yeah. <laughs> so, like to me, this is one of the things that really stands out to me about Wolfolk is that there's obviously been a lot of thought in the production mm -hmm. that went into like, okay, we want to make a DK weight yarn. How should this DK weight yarn be constructed? So right. that it yeah. hits well, all it's part the of the family. It's part yeah. of the, you know, definitely. Yeah. So it hits all the important points. Like, cause with every yarn choice you make, you, you get pros and cons. I, I'm <laughs> thinking on the way over here, it's almost like 
we we live on a we live in a town that has a hill that you can see New York City from. So you can live in a house at the top of the hill and have a fantastic view. Um, pro, con, you have to get out of your driveway in the winter when it snows. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, 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 exactly. <laughs> and we would love to have a house with a view of New York City where you don't have to worry about icy driveways in the winter. Mm -hmm. But that's really but you, not you achievable. Gotta, you gotta take the good to the bad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's right. and. And that also segues a bit into the pilling, um, you know. Yeah, that's I had um, I had noted I had asked Meredith because um, a lot of folks say like, mm -hmm. oh, uh, it, you know, I've noticed a pill or two. I just knit it. There's a pill on it now. What do I do? Yeah, ah, there's a pill. I know. Um, but yeah. uh, to me, that's part of being a soft yarn. Exactly, that's, that's the sign of a really it's soft yarn, and it's a bit of uh, good with you know maybe less desirable but there are also ways to solve it and I think some of it is knowing yeah. that it's going to happen when it's unexpected and right. it is shocking absolutely yeah. right but if you kind of know like I want this really soft yarn it's going to have a bit of a halo um, yeah. but, you know that's part of its and if, and charm if you yeah you will get some pills I I tell people that every day you know when you know, when people are looking, it's like, oh, does it pill? Well, if it's soft, it will pill. And, <laughs> you know, and basically, so like I said, it's, it's knowing how to deal with it. Um, That's it. And I think it is helpful to know that it's expected and, uh, yep. you know. well, and then nothing is wrong. It's, it, it should, yeah. it should pill. That's what's supposed to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, well, it just because it is that soft, that is a natural. And some of it is just loose fibers coming out, you mm -hmm. know, and it, a lot of times it does settle once you kind of move past it, but mm -hmm. you know, they're gleaners or a lily brush. I've used both. They both mm -hmm. work great. And some yeah. of it is, it's a bit like everything. It's investing the time in those pieces, right? So Absolutely. you've done the initial investment of purchasing it and then the time to knit it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it also comes with the expectation, like in the spring, you should probably wash it. You know, you should uh, right. remove no, any exactly. lens. You should store it correctly. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, and I think some of that just comes with time. Like when I was definitely a new knitter, I did not want to do any of those things, right? I wanted uh -huh. to knit, I wanted to knit really fast, and knit all the things. And, <laughs> and <laughs> that over time you kind of, okay, this is an investment piece. And it, yeah. it comes with other things that you have to do Absolutely. to maintain that investment. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've got other sweaters that too, it's like, you know, every couple of wears you just give we we carry cleaners here we just give them a good cleaning and they look good as new yeah yeah so that's all it just takes time and um yeah i gleaned i was uh showing meredith before we got on like this is teddy's sweater that i've made in the snow and i gave it a good gleaning because yes, he wears it a lot again. every yeah. time he's in the his little carriage he's in his wolf folk um so sweet sweater. Snow, snow sweater. yeah and it wasn't like you said, I think it's halo. And then it's, yeah. you know, yeah. if you, I hadn't actually noticed pills, but once you start looking at the halo, you're like, ah, I could defuzz it a little bit. And exactly. Gleaner. And mm -hmm. it was lovely, lovely. Gleaners I do are think an that, amazing thing to have in your toolbox. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Def so about these colors. Can I? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, this, so all of these are um, obviously designed to be like cohesive, right? You're not, uh, you're not, it's not the rainbow. <laughs> right, for sure. It is not the rainbow. <laughs> so, it's not, it's true. Oh, and, hold on. and I feel like kind of going back to the idea of the story, everybody has a story to tell. And I think every color has a place at some point, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, I love hot pink, but we will probably never do wolf folk in hot pink. Yeah. It, it's not part of that story. And I think other people tell other stories and there's a place for everybody. If we all did the same thing, that'd be super boring. And right. exactly, you know, I think it's great for people to do different things and people to have lots of choices and not mm -hmm. everything works for everything and sometimes right. you want to splash a color and you know this is our story and we'd love for anybody to join along that wants to but yeah I mean our, our colors are very subtle <laughs> no they are beautifully subtle though I mean yeah, yeah. they tend to work 
as the small collection, like when we release them, we tend to do gradients. That's just our go-to, uh, uh -huh. but then they still work within the bigger framework uh, right. on the wall. Yeah, that is one thing um, I noticed. I knit the Andrea Mallory stripes and the yes. flap, uh -huh. um, and all the colors go together. Yeah, right? they really like, do. That's... They all have a certain <laughs> muted quality to them that helps them, you know, relate to each other. Yeah, that's yeah. that's one thing that um, sometimes it's hard to pick color. Like you know, when you're you're doing a project and you want to have two or three colors, or the pattern calls for two or three colors, you're wondering like, do these go together? Um, you never have to ask that question with Wolf. I, I really, yes. I do. I, <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think you can pretty much pick anything. And, you know, even when we're putting up the stuff on the wall, it's like, you know, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? And it's more, it's just more like preference rather than, oh, this doesn't work. They really, yeah. and it can do. change, you know, compatible. so sometimes yeah, I'll, some two things will come together and I'll be like, I never thought of that, but it looks so good, yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So is this your color palette too? I always wonder that about like um, yarn, you know, yarn companies. If this is the palette of the of the folks who run the company, or if this is like the palette that they would like to put forward in the world. Does that make sense? Like, I do. I do. Uh, I would say it's definitely Kristen's palette, one hundred percent. Okay. Uh, and it's probably Vanessa's palette too. I like to do neutrals with a pop of something. Mm -hmm. um and it could be a pup there but like i'm wearing like a neon it's just it's a super simple chain but it's right it's a little neon it's a little pop of something <laughs> right yeah, yeah. um but this is a new lift color i don't know if you can really see it's a dark green oh Ooh. cool so we've mm. got three new lift colors coming it's a sort of a green gray mm -hmm. The dark yeah, like green and then a brighter gold with a white cage. Yeah. It's yep. a little different than L4. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is Denise Bayron's Wave of Change pullover. And I knit it in the oh. green look. Oh, and nice. I, I wear it every week. It's so, <laughs> it's such a great pattern. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I just saw her in one of her interviews too. And uh, like the way that I freeze she... again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we might have. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I can see Denise being a very um, knittable designer in Woolfolk, just with the architectural yeah, details. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like real clean lines. And absolutely. Absolutely. It was a really mm -hmm. a good, nice pairing. Good I was very <laughs> delighted. I was so yeah. delighted. So some uh, somebody else asked me yesterday what my palette is, and I, I do wear a lot of black. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to branch out and, um, but I love uh, those soft pinks, you know, like blush or um, clay. Do you know what I'm talking about those? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know just what you're talking I, about. I, it's <laughs> my favorite right now. Every time I buy yarn, I end up with that color. Uh -huh. yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and I'm an equal opportunity shopper. Uh, <laughs> I, I like to buy lots of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, okay. So, I have a last question. Do you have any other questions? Um, we... hmm. I don't think so. I think you've covered pretty much everything. Hey. I know it's kind of uh, odd sitting in a warehouse. So you can kind of. <laughs> it's okay. It's real life. <laughs> yeah, totally. So are your offices, uh, do you have like, I think, and that's one thing actually going back to the beginning uh, of our conversation. Um, just recognizing like you guys are a small company. Yeah. It's part of the mystery, right? Like <laughs> you, nobody really knows who's here or what's going on or what we're doing. <laughs> but it's that's, that's <laughs> one thing that surprised me, like getting into the um, yarn industry is how many companies that we think of as like these big, companies. big corporations mm -hmm. are not Have big like corporations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 When I was first hired before I went to the interview, I had this like idea of what it would be like. And then I saw it and I was like, oh, it's a warehouse. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just a warehouse. Um, we've moved three times. Well, I guess we've moved twice. We've had three warehouses. Wow. Um, this one is the closest to my house, which was really nice. Perfect. Of Kristen. Yeah, definitely. And uh, there is a few spaces but for the most part I work here alone and that was pre-pandemic mm -hmm. um, I had more visitors pre-pandemic but 
Um, for the most part, I'm alone here at the warehouse most of the day. I have an office and then I have like a shipping station up front mm -hmm. um, with another computer and uh, all of my shipping stuff. And then we just have racks with yarn in bags. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty, we have a room with our sample clothes. And, and so that's the other kind of component is mm -hmm. the shuffle of like the clothes we buy for photo shoots, any samples that are being made, where are we at with that? Am I expecting samples in you know when is the next photo shoot but uh -huh. otherwise yeah how, it's yeah how far out are you planning like your collections because your collections come out like really nice and cohesive and your models are gorgeous and everything hangs together like a like a real collection it's lovely it's very fashion <laughs> forward yeah you know? yeah definitely. uh when uh m my background um professionally aside from theater is in retail, but mostly in sewing. Okay. Um, I was the manager of a quilt shop and machine dealership for me. Uh, and one of my greatest pleasures was having mannequins in like a store window wearing clothes that we had made. They were maybe class samples and someone come in and be like, I want, where are these clothes? And you're like, well, you can make them. <laughs> That's <laughs> you what know? you tell people, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah so that aesthetic really responds to me this idea of you know the um, fashion forward but clean minimal things that are timeless things that you want to put the investment in because you know right. in future years you'll still want to be wearing them you know absolutely I don't think anybody takes you know retail lightly it uh, you know as a purchaser of yarn mm -hmm. yeah you always want to be mindful of that yeah yeah, for sure. No, I mean, I think a lot of the, if we put wolf walk pieces all up in our windows, we'd have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, in a good way. In yeah. Good way. yeah. Of, uh, mm -hmm. Can we buy that? We're, right now we're planning much shorter in advance because travel is harder. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah. it, our timeline has been a lot more compressed. Uh -huh. I guess for some people it might get spread out, but for ours, it's much faster. So. Uh -huh we'll shoot a collection and launch it basically a month later, whereas normally it, it would have been several months in between. Wow. Yeah. Um, and everything is getting delayed a little bit. We just heard back about some yarns that we hoped would be summer, but now it looks like early fall and that's the way it's going to be, you know, yep. there's not much any of us can do about it. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's fine. You know, it is what it is, but yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, consistent across the whole industry <laughs> absolutely yes. and 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 even many of our customers are finally you know i feel like you know just i explained it to people at least a couple of times a week still about how you know places countries were closed down and supply chains are disrupted and you know it's just it is it is, it is what it is and it's just yeah. being annoyed about it it's not gonna help anybody <laughs> no i mean the mill did shut down it's just not back operating a hundred percent right so it is operating but not with at full capacity which right. i don't yeah. want them to be like then you're like okay like it's it's fine okay. so that the time is just a little longer uh, yep. but we tend to again because we know the story and the vision is very clear and it came from Kristen initially yeah and it's very easy for all of the other decisions to be made how to style it where to shoot it what the model like it's all very easy because mm -hmm. we know the story that's so cool yeah it's a it's a brand with a very singular vision yeah it is cool that's great <laughs> it can still evolve which i think is also really Absolutely. interesting yeah. yeah yeah it doesn't mean it can't evolve it's just you you know at this point in time you you know exactly you know like you said multiple people can make decisions because the story is so clear yeah, yeah so yeah, that's cool. It's a marketing person's dream. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Uh, so I think you did have one more question. I did have right a last now. question. <laughs> yes. Which is always a fun one. Yeah. And it's what's on your needles slash hook slash loom slash I don't know what your creative craft all is. All the things. All the things. Tell us more. <laughs> uh, I think I was telling Kathleen before, I am a pretty slow knitter. Uh, so I tend to do one sweater a year, maybe two. Uh, but this one I finished really quickly. I was so delighted. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna knit uh, a sweater with our linen wool blend straw. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be the next one I work on. Yeah. Um, I've got the yarn already pull. It's one of our new colors. That'll be for August. Nice. 
Um, and then I'm making my first pair of socks. I'm knitting my first pair of socks. Cool. Yay. Yeah. Uh, a friend, a local friend who has uh, her own indie dye uh, brand mm -hmm. uh, did a Halloween sort of little bundle that was very cool. Uh -huh. um, and it's greens, mostly in a little blues and a little dark. So that's going to be my first pair of socks. Great. Very fun. Awesome. Yeah, and I her Halloween socks uh, <laughs> from last year. <laughs> Actually, it was a knitted wit yarn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. So, I'm course. sure you know from the Portland area, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so more Jean. And company. Yep. Yes. yes uh, so. It's a good time to be knitting Halloween socks, everybody. I in did start preparation. Them yeah. No, I, I started them last summer and put them aside, trying trying to get my my daughter is uh, really very into socks at the moment, so she's spurred spurred us back into socks. <laughs> I wanna I wanna try, uh, but yeah, it's, it's like knitting with toothpicks. So <laughs> yeah, it is. Are you are you a loose knitter or a tight knitter or or average? I I feel like I'm pretty average, mm -hmm. um, and I did get the little Chiagu shorties uh -huh. to try and like. Yeah help mm -hmm. because I am super loose on double points so I was trying uh -huh. to uh -huh. pinch it up a bit mm -hmm. uh, and I'm working on a mystery quilt right now yeah it was it was given in uh, pieces every week oh, right wow. but I didn't catch up <laughs> it happened. so I know what it looks like but I'm still working on it <laughs> that's fine that's good that's so a mystery does that come pre-cut or do you like no. just get the oh. You just get the instructions. That's the most daunting yeah. thing. I want to do a quilt someday, but the cutting is very daunting to me. Mm. I'm sure a lot of folks say, I want to knit a sweater someday, but like <laughs> this leaves are daunting. <laughs> it's all like magic, sort of. It's exactly. uh, absolutely uh, cutting is my least favorite part. So I like that we get a chunk of it and then we cut and deal with that and then get another and do oh. that and you get I do, even if I know the pattern I don't cut it all at once it's uh -huh. too boring yeah <laughs> it is. that is the worst part I totally agree uh. <laughs> to each their own some people hate swatching some people hate blocking some people hate sleeves you know it's, it's, well, that's okay yeah, I was we were saying before my my thing that I would prefer not to do I don't hate any of it but the thing I would prefer not to do is long stretches of stock in that. Right, right, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Or garter back mm -hmm. and forth and back mm -hmm. and forth if it's flat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and that doesn't bother me. I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> it's TV knitting. It's like perfect TV yeah. knitting. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of like to have right like everybody a range of both something that absolutely I can do and not think about something I might learn something new doing. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All right. Well, it's been so nice to chat with you, Meredith. Thank you. You yeah. too. Yeah. Thank you. And who so knows much. when when we can all travel again? If you're ever in the New York City area, definitely come see us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I yeah. I do tend to come. I mean, I haven't been in years, but I do um come back occasionally to the city. I'd love to come out to Montclair. Yeah. 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 It's an easy, super train easy on the train, out. like yeah, <laughs> from the city. So. Thirty yeah. forty minutes, depending on what train you catch. Yeah. And we are we're like steps from a train station now too. So. So oh, that's great. Plenty I, of places to eat. Thanks so much. Thanks for chatting thank with you us. So Thanks, much. Ladies, have I a good day. Your time. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. And I am thrilled to say that we are able to present highlights from the Wolf Oak Trunk Show, which will be on display at Yarnia during the 2021 New Jersey Wool Walk in April. Please enjoy.
Thank you.